before you bring your pup home, I'm gonna tell you one thing you need to get before you bring the little monster into your house. Hi guys, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. For those of you returning, hi again. I'm Tiana and today I thought I'd come on here to talk to you guys about the top 20 things that I think you should get before you bring your dog home. Because trust me, when you get your puppy, you don't have very much time to go out and run about and get everything. And if you do, kudos to you. Basically, I came up with the top 20 things that I think would be beneficial for you to have before you get your pet. Some things are things to keep in mind when you have your pet at the house. Obviously, this is gonna range per dog, per person, per household, but this is just the top 20 things that I learned after having my little pup here that I wish I would have known before actually bringing her in because it was a little hectic at times very hectic because we did not have all these things before we got her and i wish we did because it wouldn't have been as much of a headache so these are not going to be in order i'm just going to go off of what i can think of so first thing first is the dog bed now don't purchase a dog bed according to size for the dog now because if you're getting like a big big dog let's say you're going to get like a german shepherd a lab let's say a golden retriever husky you don't want to buy it a small little bed for a poodle because they're just gonna grow out of it. So if you buy them a bigger bed now, then they can grow into it. You're gonna get more out of your money than you would if you just bought a small bed. And not just that, you'll have the bed for longer and you don't have to go out in maybe a week or two to buy another bed. So next is a cage or a crate or some people like play pens or kennels, whatever you kind of want to call it. Something to put your puppy in for maybe transporting it, for having it at night to sleep in. Maybe if you're trying to potty train it. We don't like cages, so we got her like a little, they're called, I don't know what you call them, but they're like a little den. It almost looks like a little playhouse. that's has fur on the bottom. They zip up. There's like holes on the side and it's easy to travel with. So light and it was cheaper than a cage, which was nice. But also too, with the cage or the crate, if you're getting like a really, really big dog and you think the dog will be in there for like, let's say a couple months, a few months, maybe for a long time, don't get a crate that's gonna fit it as a pup. Get a big one. They're expensive. It's gonna last you longer. They'll have a little more room. If you don't want your pup to have that much room, some of them do come with dividers, or you could simply make one yourself, make like a little barrier. It kind of saves you money in the long run. We got like a medium sized one because she's not gonna be in it for a long time. Maybe ask the breeder or where you're getting the dog from if they've been in one, if they like them, kind of what they like, what they don't like, and maybe go from there and maybe just a little bit more helpful so you don't have to spend a ton of money that's not gonna last you a long time. You never know. So next thing is next. I'm gonna talk about this, like it's crazy, but it's bowls. Ask the breeder what they eat out of, what they drink out of. I know my dog is extremely, extremely picky with bowls. For some reason, she likes a bowl at one house, doesn't like it at another, likes a bowl at my work, doesn't like the bowl at the house. It's really, really weird. Who knows? Make sure to get like a size bowl for your dog. Don't get like a puppy size bowl if she's gonna be a bigger dog because she's not gonna be able to eat out of that forever. Then you're gonna have to buy some more bowls. It's easier just to buy like a bigger bowl, have it for a long time, let her get used to it and go from there. Some dogs like metal, some don't like metal, some like rubber, some don't like rubber, some like plastic, some don't like plastic, some will move the bowls around so you may want to get one of those that have like a holder. Don't go like too crazy expensive on bowls until you figure out kind of what they like and then you can buy like a nicer better set once they're not puppies and they're kind of used to eating out of that type of bowl basically just get some bowls go from there if they don't like it try something else if they don't like it i use containers she ate out of the container she drank out of containers it's so weird so that's something else to think of when you're purchasing the pup now a collar and a leash i'm gonna like they're separate obviously but for the collar, do not buy a little puppy size collar. Buy something that will last them throughout their time. Make sure it can go small, small, but make sure that the collar can actually go bigger so that when it grows, it grows with it. And if it's a little bit big at first, don't worry because I have something else that's probably better than a collar for when they're a pup. And make sure to get like a collar that's gonna be comfortable, nice, and you like, they also like. I like the collars that are reflective that have like a nice thicker band 
that's just my own opinion but like i said buy something that's a little bit more expensive and not so cheap because they do tend to chew on them if they can get a hold of them and they are strong so if you have the leash on it they can basically just come right out of it after talking about the collar a leash is another thing definitely get a nice leash now get a nice like medium length leash i find when they're pups they don't need to go anywhere too too far but when they're older they're going to want to explore so if you get a medium size one that'll be good for when they're pups that'll be good for when they are kind of older and then if you want to get like a shorter or a longer one later on, you have a medium one already, then you will have a medium size one that's good. If you wanna add length, you can always tie it to a second rope or something like that. So maybe just get a medium size light leash for the meantime until you figure out what kind of leash would work better for your dog. Now the next thing I'm gonna say is a harness. Now a harness I found, here's the thing. I really like harnesses better than collars because it's actually not gonna choke them and you don't have to pull as hard, you can kind of just hold it and their body can't go anywhere. I really like them better that way they can't try and get out. I wanted the harness, I bought a size medium thinking my German Shepherd would be a little bit bigger. Going with a harness, my tips would be get a small harness to begin with. It doesn't have to be an expensive one, it could be a cheap small harness and then once you see the size of the pup, you can then purchase a harness for later on that's better quality. If you want to buy one that could last them from now till a little later on. Perhaps ask the breeder or where you're getting the dog from what size they are, or you can take the dog to the pet store that day and get them measured. I personally would have just bought like a, the smallest, cheapest one. We do use Owen's Toy Poodles harness on her because she's just too small for the medium one. Next up is I'm gonna combine these into one because this I find is something I have in your mind before you get the pup. I'm not saying you have to have it, I'm just saying keep it in mind. Definitely think of who your vet will be because when you get the pup, you're gonna have questions, you're gonna wanna call the vet. So make sure you have like a well-trusted vet and you know of a good vet before you pick up the pet. It will make it so much easier, so much better. Next thing I'm gonna combine it with is pet insurance. The reason why I'm saying this is because if your dog is kind of prone to bad hips, maybe bad legs, maybe arthritis, maybe something. It's better to maybe have an idea of pet insurance in your mind beforehand, just in case. I know for our German Shepherd, we are definitely getting pet insurance. We thought about it, we got the quote beforehand, we're just waiting until she's eight weeks old because a lot of pet insurance companies will not take them until they are eight weeks old and she's seven and a half. So in a couple days, pet insurance is gonna be coming. It's not a need before you get it, it's basically just have that thought in mind just in case. Now, the next thing I'm gonna recommend is a car seat cover. Ours, I absolutely love it. It's perfect, it's awesome, it's the best. I absolutely love it. It's like pee proof, throw up proof because she threw up on the way home. It covers like the doors, it covers, it's almost like a big hammock. And the nice thing is, is you can zip it up so it covers the doors, but it also goes down. So when they're older and they start to step into the car, it won't scratch the car itself. I love it. It's comfortable and two people can sit. So the dog can sit on one end with the thing up. So like the door cover up, the seat cover up, and then I can sit in it beside the dog with the little part down. So it's easy for me to sit in. It came with a seatbelt part for your dog. So the dog doesn't move around which you're probably gonna want a bigger one if the dog does get bigger later on. And this also has like room so a person can sit in it and have the seatbelt click in, which is good. Now I find it's a perfect size for a car. I'm not sure about an SUV. I'm not sure about like a truck. You may want to get like a size bigger one, but this is definitely a good one for a car. And I'm not saying you have to go ahead with this one. I'm just saying this one's the best one for us because we had just, just, just purchased the new vehicle and then the new puppy was coming in and we wanted it protected so this is definitely going to protect it. Next up, it's gonna sound silly but you're gonna wanna pick them up, dog poop bags. Don't get crazy expensive ones, just get something. I got the eco degradable ones, nice earth friendly and I think you can get like good ones on Amazon. I got mine from Winners which is also known for TJ Maxx. They had really good ones on sale. Really, it's just when you're out and about with your dog. 
I bring my dog to work, so of course she's going to go, so we pick it up with the bags. When we're at home, we're in the bush, so we just pick it up with a shovel. Into the bush it goes because it will degrade. Then you're going to also want to pick up pee pads. Actually, my dog never really used them. We actually only use them to like kind of pick up the throw up, but if your dog's not potty trained or you're putting it in a kennel or maybe that's how you want to train your dog is pee pads. I didn't go crazy expensive with pee pads. I got like the cheapest ones. I got a hundred of them for like $24. They're from Amazon. They did work really well. She did spill water on it. It didn't seep through or anything, which is really nice. So if you're looking for like pee pads, I'll put the link down below for them, but they did work really well. We still have a ton of them and I don't even think she's going to ever use them again because she seems to be doing good, fingers crossed. Goodbye pee pads. <laughs> Next is going to be food. I'm going to kind of put this into two like I was saying. Ask the breeder or where the dog is coming from what kind of food they're feeding it. And if let's say you can't get that food or you don't want to give them that kind of food, maybe research out what kind of the best food for the dog is. I find that with puppies, they may be stubborn at first to eat, so you may want to get a can of soft food, mix them with hard food, and then get them to eat that way. Or maybe ask the breeder if you can get like a baggie of the dog food so they can have that to eat, and then you can go pick up the dog food to see if she will eat it at your house. Just things like that. And make sure to buy like a food that's good for that dog. I find that so much better because why would you want to get something that may make your dog sick and then you may have to like run out and buy more food and then waste money and just try and ask the breeder and if you don't want to give them that one then just research it out and try it. <laughs> now treats is another good one but make sure you research what kind of treats the dogs can have as well. Ask the where you get the dog from, what kind of treats they were having. My dog was having like raw steak and raw hamburger and like real bones. We did want to get her like real treats. So we did get her these all natural treats that there's only like a couple things in it, which is good. They're all good for her. She's been having no problem. So really read what's in the treats before you give it to them because if the dog is allergic to something, you don't want that to get in their treats because then they're going to want it. Or you can stick to the all natural, which basically she's been getting like bacon and she's been getting steak and she's been getting hamburger. Just try and figure out kind of the best treats for the dog. Bones is another good one. Make sure to get the bones. It's going to be perfect to keep them entertained. Stop chewing furniture. It's good for their teeth. And just try and find a bone that's good for the dog. If the dog has a lot of allergies or it's sensitive to something, read what's in the bone. Try and read where the bone came from. Try and get a bone that's not like puppy size because they're going to grow up and eat it or swallow it or something. Try and get like a decently big bone. We got our dog the big, big bone and she absolutely loves it because she was chewing on sticks. We were tired of sticks because she'd swallow the sticks and chew them and swallow and it was a nightmare. So we got her this long, long bone. Chew toys. This is different than toys because chew toys, I'm saying this as in teething toys. Pick up before you bring your pup home. Before you bring your pup home, I'm gonna tell you one thing you need to get before you bring the little monster into your house. Teething toys. You need them. I'm, you need them, you need them, you need them. I can't say it any other way. You absolutely need teething toys. Reason why is because when we got our dog, she was fine the first day, the second day she was teething, third day she was teething, fourth day she was teething. You can see the pattern. We didn't have teething toys. We only had like squeaky toys. Mm -mm. Those didn't keep her occupied. Buying your dog some teething toys, it could be a teething ring, it could be a bone, actual teething toys, pick up one or two. So when she's teething, you can give it to her and you're going to notice when they're teething because they're going to want to bite on everything. When they're teething, give it to them. When they're done with the bone, take it away and only give it to them when they're teething so that they can actually look forward to chewing that when their teeth are sore. Toys is another thing. Don't load up on a bunch of toys because dogs are picky with toys. My golden retriever like that my parents have was so picky. She doesn't like anything rubber. The dog I have absolutely loves, loves, loves squeaky toys and rubber. Loves it. And she loves robes. So I would just suggest picking up maybe one of each, one squeaky toy, one stuffy, one ball, tennis ball, and then see what she likes and go from there because why overload it? Not just that, if you have family members or friends, they're probably gonna wanna get toys for the dog and then you're gonna be overloaded and then you want the dog to kind of learn 
the toy. Go get your ball. Go get your rope, not ropes, balls. Don't overload them. Pick them up a couple toys, see what they like, don't like what they play with more. Get the use out of them. That's what I'm saying. Get the use out of their toys. A brush, I say comb, the best one, comb. Comb, my golden retriever had so many brushes, nothing worked better than the combs. So I picked up a brush for my little Scarlet and she isn't shedding, nor does she need the brush right now. But she did get in sap, so I did use her for that. And I'm gonna link the comb down below, but I find combs so much better than brushes and those mitts. I find the only thing that will brush the dog's hair are those combs. Obviously, it's gonna be different for each animal because they have different fur. So don't go too expensive with brushes and combs until you know what will work. Just try them out and see, maybe try starting with a less expensive one and then working your way up and seeing what kind of brush or comb your dog actually likes and what kind of comb or brush it actually works on the fur and takes it off. Next thing I'm gonna say is get something maybe for like the ground. I know you can get, I think they're called like ground stakes where you can put a metal pole in the ground for the leash to stay on. If you get them that, then they can sit outside while maybe you're washing dishes and you can watch them and have some alone time. So if you get something like that, then maybe they can run around with a really long leash, be out there if they want to, not get into any trouble. Just things like that. That's another thing to think of. So I will say another thing is make sure you have a lot of paper towels, wet wipes, just things in your purse, in your car, wherever you bring the dog because dogs are messy. They may have accidents. It's gonna sound silly, but you're gonna wanna have them on hand. They may start coughing, they may throw up, they may get dirt all over you. So bring that with you. I wish I did on the way down to where we picked up the dog. When she got sick, we absolutely had nothing but pee pads. So I had to take the pee pads and clean up the puke with that. So now I know keep paper towels, wet wipes, Kleenex, anything on you just in case of an emergency. Was not thinking at all. Now dogs are messy, so make sure to have something underneath their dog food because it's gonna get everywhere. I know Scarlett used to dump her water, her food, and then eat it from the floor, drink it from the floor, and it'd be a mess. So to save your flooring or your carpet, whatever you put the dog food on, put something underneath. It's gonna save you in the long run. And lastly, gates. Something for gating. Reason why is because they're gonna to wanna to go everywhere and you're not gonna to wanna to allow them to go everywhere. And if you have to leave, they're gonna get into everything. I know Scarlett has been very good and only got into our five gum. That's it so far, <laughs> fingers crossed. We use plywood because we know she's not really gonna get into much, so we kinda get it with that. Some people get baby gates, some people get like these dog play gates. You could probably just use like a table, a couple chairs, it just depends on your dog. So maybe something like that. Think about gates before you pick up your dog. I basically just wanted to come on here and tell you guys some things that I wish I knew before I picked up Scarlett to kind of help me and help her, help everybody, because you don't really know, you don't think of everything. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. More videos will be coming like this soon. Please leave comments in the description for what you guys want to see next. Make sure to go